everyone. This is Tina McGlynn with another episode of Life and Stories. An interesting thing, I know I uh, did not uh, drop a podcast last week. That's because I was up in New York finally visiting my family. And lo and behold, I run into this gentleman, Dr. Jack Kunkel, who I've known since, oh, we're not going to say how long, but I first met Jack uh, when he was a participant in my brother Mike's bodybuilding shows of New York State Natural. So I know Jack is like optimal, you know, health um, guy and pro bodybuilder and really dedicated to a healthy lifestyle. And fast forward, and I happened to notice, oh, Dr. Jack Kunkel, which by the way, congratulations. And he's an alternative medical doctor. And I kind of, we're going to talk about that because I love that space. But also I want to touch base on a uh, book that he just put out the second edition, which really resonated with me because it's called, it's not fat loss. Oh, it's fat loss, not weight loss. Sorry, Jack. I didn't want to screw that up, but that I love that title. So welcome, Dr. Jack Uncle. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Yeah. Very so good. tell us, tell us your journey from when I knew you. Well, you still do it, probably still um, doing a little bit of, you know, fit, uh, fitness, obviously. So tell us about your journey from a uh, pro bodybuilder to a um, natural physician. Tell me about that. I, I like to start back um, when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, 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 I grew up um, I, I fell in love with weight training because it gave me confidence. Yeah. And I grew up as I, I had a broken brain. I was skinny fat. I, I wasn't athletic. I wasn't able to play sports. Uh, and and I, what I learned from weightlifting was confidence. And, and that confidence helped me to achieve a lot of things in life. Uh, but then, then push, I'm in, I'm in my mid forties. Uh, almost ar- around 30 years old is when I got pretty sick. I was diagnosed with depression and hypothyroidism, yeah. uh, adrenal fatigue. Uh, my testosterone was really low, like really, really low. Uh, and I, I went to so many different doctors, four different doctors all over the place and spent a lot of money and I didn't get any results. Uh. And I, I, you know, so I, I had to repair myself. And when I started repairing myself, I started noticing my brain turn on and I started falling in love with this stuff. Uh, and I went and got my master's in clinical nutrition and I loved it. Uh, I love doing clinical nutrition. What I found was, is we live in an age where people want results now, Mm. yesterday. And with nutrition, it it just doesn't work like that. Um, Mm. Nutrition is the number one healer, right? It's gonna heal you permanently, but people don't wanna hear that. So I I, I had to expand my scope of practice uh, by getting my PhD and becoming an alternative medicine doctor uh, to be able to to get, get people results faster. Yeah, I like that. You know, I want to, you just said something that I want to point out to people about those fast results and people want the instant gratification. Um, The way I look at it, it takes nine to 10 months, 40 weeks, right? To build a human being in a womb. So what makes people think you can do it in 90 days, right? Mm -hmm. Change your body. What what do you, is it called, is it a biological function, Jack, or, or chemical what when we think of nutrition what what's going on really yeah so there's something called the study of nutritional genomics or people call it nutrigenomics and it's how this how the foods interact and become your cells or become part of you cells run on a three to six month turnover depending on the cell some some cells turn over even quicker obviously red blood cells Uh, but most of them they run on the cycle so when you give your body the genuine replacement parts, the more you give them those parts that you need, the faster your results are going to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so when, um, obviously we we're looking out today in today's world, we see a lot of obesity. We see a lot of sick people. We see a lot of diabetes. We see also on the flip side, a huge uptick in processed foods, huge uptick in sugar consumption, are those contributing factors to um, to our sick world? You know. Well, we live in a fast-paced society where people don't have time, and or they don't want to put their en- energy into themselves. Uh, they they already want that fast fix, and and we're suffering the results from that. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean if, you, if, if you're eating fast foods and you're eating processed foods and you're eating, you know, uh, bad oils, um, they, they become your cells. Um, actually, if, I mean, if, if you thought of your cell and if, if we were to, to draw a cell uh, on the outside ring, it's made up of fat and cholesterol. Okay. These are your cells, right? And yeah. when you're eating these bad fats or you're eating too much, you know, the bad fats are actually incorporating into those cells forever. So, you know, you, you're eating those bad fats, they're, they're becoming your cells, which is gross. Yeah. Uh, and then if you're eating too much sugar, you're causing, you know, the, the insulin resistance, which is also causing inflammation on that cell. Uh, you know, then you couple that with the world that we live in, the toxins, right? So we have all these toxins. And then we have nutritional deficiencies because our soil has been depleted since the 60s. Yes. Um, yeah. So I tell people, you really got to hyper-focus on you in the, these times, and, and that is mind body and it, it does start with nutrition and exercise and things like meditation it, it all works it's it's what you can do every day and that's what counts so you have to start figuring out ways to metabolically increase your body because everybody's different we're all snowflakes yep yep and there's bio individuality so if people come here i'll, I'll do a lot of um kinesiology i use three forms Great. I'll use I'll use some advanced stuff uh, called Nerve Express, where I'm going to look at the autonomic nervous system. I'll do a urinalysis. Sometimes I do what's called VCS testing to look for metals. Um, we do all these different things, or even genetic testing. I do a lot of genetic testing. Great. Because everybody's different, right? Yep. And you, yep. you have to figure out what's going to work for you. You know, my body's probably different than yours. Some people work great with carbs. Some people, if they don't have carbs, their metabolism is actually decreased. Okay. You know, some people do better with me. Other people don't, you know, some people have allergies to foods. I mean, it's, there's so much you could do for yourself with a little effort, a little time and effort. Yeah. Instead of, you know, um, I'm in the mental health space and run a, um, recovery resource center. And when I look back the last 20 years, we just too many times we turn to a pharmaceutical into, in, instead of food or herbs. And it just, unfortunately, in, from my perspective, it just exacerbates a problem because now we're, you know, hooked on chemicals or what have you that aren't really doing any good where, you know, perhaps changing your diet and lifestyle and introducing um, some herbal supplements or even certain foods would do the same thing, you know, and not be so toxic to our liver. So, you know, I, I love um, the space you're in and, and I hope that more people be open-minded to seeing yeah. someone, you know, such as yourself, because it's so much easier to do things in a natural alternative method. And I, and, and here's the thing, Jack, it shouldn't even, it shouldn't even be called alternative because it's really what we did decades we had to do, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 For the mo most part of the history. Yeah. Except for the, te obviously the, the, you know, technology and the testing, but at least that's a great compliment to, you know, looking as at food as medicine um, in, in your water and, and, and watching what you're putting in mm -hmm. your body. What do you think uh, from your pain, what's the biggest challenge you see for people? Um, the biggest challenge I see for people is they don't understand the amount of work you have to put into yourself, period. Okay. Um, I'll, well, let's just say somebody comes to me for weight loss. Um, and I say, hey, journal your food. I'm not even going to tell you what to eat because if I do, you're, you, I know they're not going to. If I say, hey, here's this plan. Um, I mean, I can only do it 300 times before I'm realized <laughs> this, people aren't following this plan. Yeah. So make better choices. Here's a list of foods that are healthy. Here's a list of foods that are unhealthy. Can you see the, the correlation? Like this is bad. It's not really good. This is good. And do you like any of these, right? So we start, we start working on this, but people don't understand the amount of work it is. Uh, if, if you're looking to get healthy, you have to move, right? Mm -hmm. if, you're, yeah. if, if you want to lose weight, you have to exercise and move. Yeah. Um, you know, and if, if you want to have better mental health, you have to really work on your gut and you have to move. And, you, you know, I mean, I had depression for most of my life when I was a kid. And one of the best things for me was cleaning up my diet and, ex and making sure my gut is good and exercise. Yeah. yeah. Right. And 
so I get a lot of patients that come who've been on antidepressants for years and they don't work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So now, you know, I'm testing them for whole foods. So we use um, a company called Standard Process and MediHerb and I'll look for specific herbs that'll help them. Um, and we have great results. Uh, sometimes people just need a break from them. Yes. And yeah. then I'll put them on uh, somebody study. Well, somebody who's got really bad depression, uh, we might use a St. John's wort, which is uh, the one I use is pretty strong. Yeah. Um, so we might be using St. John's wort or really bad anxiety, kava. Um, we use other whole food stuff like it's called Mintran, Minchax, Orchax. Uh, there's a plethora of things that work together to help people. And then, you know, if, if, if they're like having a hard time, then they go back and take their medication and this time it works. So there's, there's kind of a place for all this stuff, right? I mean, it, it doesn't mean you, you can ever be, if somebody came to me, they're super depressed. I could give them stuff to stop that. Um, but if they want to go to their medical doctor and, and get something fine, but you're not supposed to be on it for the rest of your life because we know it doesn't work anymore. It just, it stops working. I mean, that, it's in the medical literature of most of them, right? I mean, it's, it's in the literature. It doesn't, it, it stops working with time. So what is the, what is the root cause of the problem? And it's, it's basic physiology. It's, it's the basics of what your body needs, you know, food, air, water, you know, light, clean, <laughs> clean food, clean water, right? Clean air. Yeah. You, you know, what do you, what do you think the number one rule of nutrition is? Drink water. <laughs> I don't out know. with the bad, out with the bad, out with the bad. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Right? I mean, I mean, that's the biggest thing is is you, you still have to focus on you know what are the what are the foods that are just not doing you good. Yeah. And that could be the simple. It could be the um, I I, I give lectures at different places and whatnot, and, and that could easily be you know the salad dressing that they're eating every day. Yeah. And they didn't realize that it has canola, safflower, sunflower, like oils that are not meant to be heated up and consumed that way. If you wanted to eat sunflowers, that's great for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You, you can't take that type of fat and expose it to oxygen. It's rancid. It and it and it becomes those cell membranes, you know, and, and they the cells become inflamed and they become yeah. rigid and you know, bad stuff can't get out. And there's a problem. There's a big problem. No, I, I agree. And I'm just thinking, you know, I um, you know, my oldest brother who is he's he's on a journey too. And you know, I've been trying to share some knowledge with him and I know um, how hard it is for people to just start. Um, it's so change is hard Brutal. and and emotional eating is such a huge problem. Mm. And um, I, I think that someone such as yourself just brings so much valuable knowledge and, and expertise in just to kind of, you know, motivate to get to that, you know, 30 day mark where, okay, where it, it slowly becomes right. A lifestyle, like you, it becomes normal. And then, then it's not as hard as far as eat, making better food choices. And then, it, and then I'm sure you tell people find something you love to move, whether it be dancing or bowling or biking or what have you just move. Right. Let's, let's talk about food. And um, let, let's talk about three things with food. Okay. Right. Um, let's think the first, the first rule of when you're trying to eat better is what is healthy food? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that's, that's key. And, and we talked a little bit of, you know, out with the bad. So it's, it's, how do we make these better choices? So it's kind of the rule number one, what is the healthy foods and, and how are you making better choices in your day? And, and that could be as easily as changing out your salad dressing for using olive oil and vinegar. Um, it, it's, it's making little tweaks. That could be you eat eggs, an omelet every morning, and you get rid of the, the store-bought eggs and you get you know, free-range eggs. What a difference. Yeah. It's making these little tweaks. And then the next thing is, how do you make healthy foods taste good? And, and that's where people gotta be a little bit more creative. Um, because there's a lot of healthy foods that taste really, really, really good. Yep. And if you don't like something the way it tastes, you're not going to eat it. Um, I, I, if I eat a hard boiled egg, I get sick to my stomach, but I eat eggs every day. Right. Oh, like I love them. <laughs> yeah. Other, right. So that there's bioindividuality and then you have to make stuff convenient. Yeah. Right? I mean, you have to really think about that. If something's not convenient, you're not, you're not going to do it. Right. And if you don't like something, you're not going to eat it. And if you try to com completely change your diet, you're not going to do it. But why not make better choices? So if you just say, hey, I'm going to make some better choices. 
I'm going to find healthy foods that, that taste good and are convenient. It's a win-win situation. And you'll start developing little strategies to do that. No, that makes sense. I have hens. We we have we bought this house uh, with lots of land last summer, and I have hens. And I actually sent some up to my mom in Syracuse, and she could not believe the difference. Mm-hmm. I said, absolutely. And of course, they free range, and we we you know we feed them real food. There's nothing you know they they're not eating hormones and chemicals and you know you know whatever because they're right next to the garden and when growing season was over i let them run free right into the garden and just eat the leftovers you know and i thought to myself what a correlation into what a animal eats that we consume sure and that's part of the problem people have no idea you know have to read labels you are what you eat you are what they eat eats i mean my chickens you know they're they they do a little free range but there's so many foxes they're that eat them um it's hard for us to do that but yeah. they have organic they have organic veggies every day yeah. um, we have organic feed for them which I, i'm not a huge fan of um but we can't we don't have enough money to give them organic vegetables to get eggs so. yeah yeah um, so we do our best with them but they're they're i love the girls we, i call them the girls they're they're sweet yeah you're like me that's right yeah, yeah. Just, you know i i you feed them, you know, the leftover parsley. They love cilantro. They, you know, I, I grew lettuce just for them because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, lettuce, lettuce is a waste of space in my stomach. You know, I'd rather eat kale, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that, you know, worked out. I wanted to get a goat, but I was like, oh, I better not. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the first thing I did. You know, I made myself small change by, um, you know, um, getting six hens and in starting a garden because luckily i had the space and and my brother gave me the biggest compliment he actually for the first time said sis you look great and i know i have a lot of work to do but boy that felt good right coming from mike (laughs) i was like thank you just because it wasn't that i you know i tell everybody throw away to scale it's about isn't it jack how you feel how you look are you sleeping right sure I, i People think I'm obsessed. You know, you're obsessed. You, you, I'm like, I, I'm not. Like, my diet is very easy. I, I make everything simple. There's no, there's nothing. You might want to go out to eat. I'll still go out to eat with you. I'm just going to eat healthier when I'm out to eat because I feel good. And, you know, growing up half your life with your brain not really working where it should be. And then realizing, wow, I'm not re- really that dumb idiot I thought I was for all those years. It was, there was something wrong in my brain. And I, and, Yep. Once you start seeing that, the difference, um, sure, I mean, you, you want to look good in a bathing suit or your shirt off, yeah. But when you feel good every day, you wake up, you feel good, and you go to bed and you feel good. And, you know, you don't have so many aches and pains. And I could, you know, my, my son is a modified soccer player, and he's 13. I could still beat him. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't play soccer in, in high school. I'm a better athlete now than I was when I was a kid. And that that's the point. It there's so many advantages of feeling good. Yeah. People don't know what it's like. A lot of people don't know what it's like to feel good. No, I agree. No, I, I do agree. And I, I, I totally agree. And it's a cycle, isn't it? So if we're eating bad food and we can't move, we're not feeling great. Sugar is a big trigger. It will, I tell people you, you hurt, stop eating sugar. And then, so we're, we're feeling bad, right? So then we're not moving and it's like this vicious cycle. And so somehow you got to break through it. Yeah, and it, it and it, it's um, so when you're eating sugar and you're eating these bad things, a whole bunch of things cause aging. You know, advanced glycation end products. There's too much sugar connects to a protein. Forget all that. But if you think of if you thought of a scale and it just kind of went around in a circle, say you're eating processed junk food, right? You eat this processed junk food, it gets into your body. Your body tries to absorb it. Well, it it came in so quickly, and there's so much sugar. It's not natural at all. So your body secretes this hormone called insulin and insulin comes flying in your bloodstream. It's like, what is happening here? If I don't get rid of this, I'm going to cause a whole bunch of issues in my body, increased cortisol, nerve damage, you name it. So it sends a ton out and then it, it's going out of the re- these receptors super, super quickly. But because you ate that food, there's inflammation on those cells. Mm-hmm. Now the insulin's trying to talk to the cells. Hey, you there? Well, they're not listening to you. It's like I gave you my car keys, and you try to put them in your car. It's not hearing you, right? It's like my kids. That I'm yelling at them. They don't hear me. <laughs> right? You know, right? It, it's it, or or I'm, I'm putting gas on my hood of my truck instead of in the gas tank. The cells are not working. 
So what happens is your body says, okay, I have to secrete a, a protein called LDL or cholesterol or the bad cholesterol. <laughs> and then that's coming and it's grabbing this nutrients that your cells can't use and it's storing it in your fat cells. Yeah. But what do you think just happened to your body? You're, now your fat cells are, are happy, but your body isn't because you don't have nutrients. So if you don't have nutrients, what's going to happen? Of course, you're going to want to eat. And what are you going to want to eat? Something as quick as possible. And you're, you just said it, you're tired, you're depressed, you're lethargic. And if you eat sugar immediately, what happens? Dopamine comes and you're happy for how long? Yes. Five minutes? <laughs> yeah. it's, not worth it. it's, just, it's just not worth it. Yeah, it's not sustaining, but, but we do it, right? Because it's that pleasure it. principle. And, and that's, yeah. that's the thing is, is I, when I sat and observed people in my surroundings, I'm like, wow, there's an awful lot of people I know that are emotional eaters. And, um, and of course I know the connection between good gut health and brain health and the neurological processes, but I don't think a lot of people give any thought to that. Sure. They just eat. They just eat. Yeah. You know, and, and that, and that, that's okay. If, if that's how someone wants to live, but yeah. when you feel good, right. You, you can't argue with it. Right. If they're making good food choices, but how many people really do if we're emotionally eating? Yeah. <laughs> emotional eating is, is just absolutely brutal. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it is brutal and <laughs> goes on to deep neurological reasons that everybody has to deal with, whether they're using a strategy like, you know, tapping or working with a therapist, you know, it, I mean, that, that is some deep stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of like, I've studied that stuff, but that's not my profession. Yeah. My profession is, hey, how do I get the body to optimize itself? Yep. Um, who is this individual in front of me and what do I have to do to take care of them? Um, is, it, is it the girl who's depressed, who is taking a shower for three hours and now has chlorine poisoning and I got to pull that off her thyroid because she just gained 30 pounds? Oh, yeah. You know, is, yeah. It, is it the person... Um, that has all these neurological issues. They can't sleep when they lay down, their heart races. Um, they start getting weird skin things. You know, is it a parasite? Um, you know, it's all these um, problems within individuals that you don't know. Is it, is it a metal issue? I mean, I just had a, uh, I, I, I detoxed the lady whose eyes, when she came to me, looked orange. Wow. Um, so months later, her eyes were blue and I'm like, what happened there? Yeah. Yeah. I forget yeah. about metals. Yeah, I do. I, I forget about that. Meant there's some metals and minerals that we should not be putting in her cells. Well, yeah, she, she worked in a lab and this lab, you know, basically had a lot of copper and it was copper and it, we pulled it out of her brain. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's a little crazy, but everybody's different. And um, when I, when I'm working with people, there's so many paths, like people say, what do you do? Well, I start with three tests, but then it, it could go anywhere from there. Yeah. I, mean, I yeah. could do 15 tests in here and I test for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of whole foods and herbs and glandulars and things that we call cytosols and protomorphogens. But some of them take time. Others, like we have herbs that are so strong. I mean, they work so quickly. And if we could get those herbs in to give them that jump start, they feel better. Then we can start giving them the more of the whole foods and then they repair, you know, we work on gut health. I'll tell you, I work with so many people. One of the first things I have to start with is gut health because, yeah. you know, um, are they absorbing food? If you, you're not absorbing the food, I mean, I can give you a, tons of products. If you can't absorb them, what's the use? Yeah. What's the, yeah. What's the, yeah, there's no point. And mm -hmm. um, so jumping back over to the, to the book that you wrote, what, what um, would be the main theme? If you were to describe the book, it's fat loss, not weight loss. What yeah. would someone find in, in the contents of your book? A uh, no, no nonsense guide to the permanent weight loss. And oh, okay. you know, and when I originally wrote it, it was more than double the size. And my was like, <laughs> this is not your goal. He said, what is your goal? I said, my goal is I, I can't spend, Tell somebody a book. How do I write a book where they're going to get information out of every page they, they read? 
And, and that's what I did is there's, there's 24 chapters and every chapter there are specific guides and it'll tell you how hard it is to implement in your, in your life. And then it tells you how to implement it. And it shows you, you know, how to do, it gives you all the how to's, but you could just say, Hey, I, I want work. I, I want to learn a little bit more about, you know, exercise and you can go to the exercise chapter or, you know, what is food or how do, how do we slow down? What is insulin resistance or, you know, how do I slow down the absorption of sugar? Like, so how do I eat correctly? Or what is, what is uh, metabolically positioning fat loss? So we, we use fat for energy. Um, how, do, how do I do that? And there's a, a guide and charts and, but I wanted to make it easy and I wanted to make it light. And the first version of it, I did that. And as time goes on and research goes on, um, I, wanted, I wanted to update a whole bunch of different chapters. But then on top of that, I wanted to make it even lighter and with a little humor. Oh, and, good. <laughs> and I'm dyslexic. So my I'm not like, hey, I'm the greatest writer in the world. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, that's almost how I failed out of high school because I'm just not a writer. Yeah. And I wanted to prove to myself I could actually do that. So we inj I, you know, in injected a lot of humor and made it even lighter, but made it more to the point. So when people read it, they're just like, wow, this is. It's awesome because you don't have to sit there. And, you could read the whole book in a couple hours, really. Oh, okay. You're a fast reader, um, but you you'd be surprised how much value you get out of each chapter, and and that that was the goal. Is how okay. do I get as much value? Oh, you want to learn how to dine out? Go to that chapter. You want to learn to sleep better? Go to that chapter. Well, good. No, I. In fact, I'm. I um, now that I'm home from New York, I'm. I'm going to delve into it a little bit better now that my Kindle's up and running <laughs> and is it just on amazon jack is it yeah, amazon and kindle right now yep yep um, yeah yeah because i know they have exclude you know their the their exclusivity of being on kindle select is definitely worth it because then you're, yeah. you can be worldwide yeah i get that i do and um and you have a website right yep my, yeah. my name jack j-a-c-k kunkel yep. a-u-n-k-e-l dot com yeah and even though you are in New Hartford, New York, can people outside the area, do you have services where you can perhaps do it over um, something like this, a Zoom or, or tell me about that. Is it, are you? I, I do do Zoom. Uh, and what's even more powerful, I have a transformation challenge. It's online. Oh, okay. You can purchase at any time with a friend or a colleague. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll get a group of people and we'll coach them through that. Or even if somebody wants to do it by themselves, and then I could coach them off of that to, to make sure that they're, they're injecting the individual knowledge that they need, their priority. Um, but that, that's a, a, four, a six week challenge. Okay, great. And then uh, they can find all the information on your website then? Yep. Great, all right. And what other, um, I see products back there. Tell me what, what else, what are your other offerings that you um, put out to the world? I'm, I'm a huge believer in herbs. So we have yeah. a lot of yeah. uh, liquid herbs. I, I do a oh. lot of tears in the office. Um, I use a lot of uh, standard process and Medi Herb. Okay. So yeah. A lot of my patients. I mean, I have a little website you can click on if you wanted right. to get, get some of this stuff. Some of the herbs I have to evaluate you for because they're, they're that strong. Got you. Okay. And it's not like a big deal. I, I find out your medical history, check drug, drug interactions, blah, blah, blah. Explain how to take it in the, the proper doses. And then people can get them forever, you know, but I have to like approve you on a website. Yep. Yeah. I know that. Nope. Totally get that. And it makes sense. Yeah. It does. So um, any last word before we end out? Any, any uh, aha moments that you've seen? I mean, it's, it's uh, people, I, I tell something, I, I like to explain something called the two, 2% 2 rule. And, and, and if you think of this 2% rule is um, I, I'm at a standing desk right now. Right, that that might give me two percent for my metabolism every day, okay? which is isn't a lot. And the walk I did directly after the meal that might give me two two percent. And the, the walk I did this morning might be another two percent. And at night I, I stand in front of this light. It's called the Juve light, and I have a vibrational platform with a grounding mat. You know that might be six percent. And all these things add up to bigger results. The better choices I made. The better food, the, the exercise that I did in the gym, you know, five days a week or yeah. four days a week, they all add up. And that's where people miss the boat. It's, you know, the 2%, the 2%, the 2% every day. 
and that's that 15%. And then over six months, okay, you've really made a, a difference. And yeah, and manageable also, pieces then. Is, is that what you mean? Just yeah, small, little bits. Yeah. And, and then you, you stack things, you stack habits. Okay. And so, for example, when I was talking about the juve light, I stacked three things. I, I grounded, I was on a vibrational plant, and I was getting the light. I, I'm in New York, and a lot of times it's just, it's horribly I know. <laughs> grew up there. Uh, good. Um, and I stack that. Or even going to the gym and being smart about going to the gym, journaling your exercises. Yeah, great idea. I mean, because if you could go into the gym and do the same thing every single day for the next 20 years, you, you didn't, you didn't accomplish anything yeah by using a, a journal and it's it's stacking little little things on top of each other uh you know you're pressed for time and you would do some heavy weights and then you would run on a treadmill and it, it's stacking these little things um when you're doing your walk you could be doing breathing exercises and you do the walk into the sunlight so you're getting natural sun so you could sleep better at night and that's it is you just funnel all these little things into your daily habits so it's, it's really what you do every single day. That's what counts, not what we do every once in a while. So when you find things that are super easy to get into your life and just be patient with it, you do one, one thing at a time. If it's out with a bad today and you work on that for two weeks, great. Pick up the book, check out a chapter, find out what real foods are. I talk about the energy of the foods and, oh, I could, I could do that. I could put that in making yeah. better choices. Oh, I could do that. I could do that. Oh, these are the vegetables and these are things that, you know, he talks about in his book, I could do that because it becomes easy. And you're you know, racking so up wins and you know, you're feeling good and then you're motivated to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, 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 that's critical, you know, stacking habits and it's what you do every day. That's yeah. what counts, not what we do every once in a while. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's just amazing. I am, uh, you know, thrilled to have you today. It was, you know, faithful that I saw you because I've been trying to get hold of you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, gotta do a podcast. I love what you're doing. I love the work you're doing. I love the message that, you know, you're putting out to the world and it, it's so needed. I, I see it every day. People just, um, you know, using food as a crush, but the wrong food and then the, the vicious cycle of eating the wrong things and not moving and then feeling, not feeling good. And, and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, my audience will, you know, grab your book and, you know, reach out to you and life is beautiful and it's definitely easier to live life when you feel good. Absolutely. Yeah. As opposed to feeling sluggish and, and being tired because you're not sleeping well and not being able to move, you know, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank you so much, Jack, Dr. Jack Kunkel. Yeah. And um, again, his book, it's fat loss, not weight loss. And it is on Amazon. But if you shoot over to my YouTube channel, you'll see all the links and a little bio about Jack, reach out to him, uh, you know, take a look at his website, take a look at his um, book, and I can promise you, you will learn a lot of things. Uh, but thank you so much, Jack, for hanging out with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. And again, everyone, hey, this is uh, Life is Good, and this is Life is Stories podcast, Tina McLean and Dr. Jack Kunkel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening.